Golf professionals all share a common skill that amateur golfers lack. That's quality ball, then ground contact. Here we see a quality ball and turf contact in slow motion. We see the club traveling down into the ball, then the ball leaves the club face as the club enters the turf, taking a divot. The ball is long gone by the time the divot is made. Recently I conducted a test hitting 40 different golf shots, striking the ground in different locations. Either perfect strikes, one inch behind the ball, two inches behind the ball, or three inches behind the ball. Here we see an example of a pin tucked on the far left at 160 yards. I'll overlay my shot results from the test to show you just how much strike quality affects the score. First up is the perfect ball then turf strike. In this example the ball flew an average of 156 yards and as you can see it produced a tight dispersion around the hole. Based on the strokes gain stats for the PGA Tour this would have produced a predicted average score of 2.5. This means that half of those shots would have been one putt birdies and the other half would have been two putt pars. I then ran the same scenario striking just one inch behind, so not a big mistake. The shots lost an average of 10 yards, there were a few more missed greens and a much wider dispersion. This produced an average predicted score of 3.04. Now it gets really interesting. I hit another 10 shots striking the ground two inches behind the ball. The results of this were incredibly different. Only 10% of the golf shots would have hit the green and the dispersion was much wider. This produced a predicted score a full shot higher than the perfect strikes, an average score of 3.53. Striking three inches behind the ball didn't fare much better, producing a score of 3.61, more than a shot higher than the perfect strikes. The reason behind the distance loss is quite simple. When you strike the ground first, there's a large cushion of dirt trapped between the club face and the ball. This reduces the energy transferred from the club head to the ball and creates inconsistent spin rates, resulting in the erratic distances. This final image shows all of the strike dispersion patterns overlaid together, with the green being the perfect strikes, the yellow were one inch behind the ball and the red and orange being two and three inches fat. And this graphic shows the dramatic effects that strike quality has on the score with anything less than perfect potentially costing half a shot or more. It doesn't sound like much but if you did it every single hole for 18 holes you start to realize just how important strike quality is. So we've identified that strike quality is a vital component to playing golf well. There are two main swing factors that affect ground contact. One is low point position and the other is arc height or arc depth. Let's take a look at low point first. Here we see an animation of the club coming down. As it travels on the downward part of the arc, it then strikes the golf ball, the golf ball leaves the face, and the club enters the ground taking a divot. This would place the lowest point of that swing circle after the golf ball. The ground contact would be more directly under the ball or even slightly in front of it as in this example. The next element is arc height or arc depth. Now for any given low point, if we had to go deeper or shallower into the ground, we change where the ground is contacted. Deeper is farther behind the golf ball. That's where our fat shots come from. The reverse of this is true, where if we raise the arc height, it creates thin contact, or in extreme examples, it can create your top shots. We see a slow motion example of this here where the club doesn't quite get to the ground and so strikes above the equator of the golf ball. These are the shots that hurt our hands and our playing partners usually tell us that we looked up. So really the two most important strike elements are low point location and arc height or arc depth. When they combine, they create the ground contact that you see the pros making day in, day out. In the strike plan, I go through everything you need to know to strike the ball like a pro. We look at the differences between irons and the driver and how to optimize your driver swing for maximum distance. We also look at the body movements and techniques involved in creating more power and more consistency. There are loads of skill drills and exercises that you can practice at home 
or in your garage or on the range, as well as lessons to improve your golf IQ. You even take a look at some of the best players in the world to see what they do differently, which gives them the consistently perfect strikes time and time again that you see on tour. Find out more about the strike plan by clicking the link or visit www.adamyounggolf.com.